All right, I think we've almost got everybody admitted. So we'll give everybody just another quick second. All right, so um, to be conscious of everybody's time, because I know some of you that are joining us tonight may want to um, attend the other webinar. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started this evening. Um, my name is Melissa Wensler. I am one of the assistant directors of enrollment at John Carroll. I am a double alum of JCU. Um, I wanna welcome you this evening. Um, we have a great panel. Please do not hesitate to ask questions using the chat function. Um, and um, without further ado, I'm gonna pass it off to my colleague, Katie Jansen. Hi everyone. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Um, we have a quick presentation for you, um, and I'm joined by uh, a few of my friends as well. Um, but my name is Katie Jansen. I'm one of the, I am the assistant director for um, student engagement at John Carroll, and I work with um, my colleague, Dr. Kyle O'Dell, who is the director of student engagement. Um, and then I have uh, four students here with me that I'm going to have introduce themselves before we get this show on the road. So, um, Matt, if you want to go ahead. Absolutely. Thank you for the start, Katie. Hi, my name is Matt Meyer. I am a junior here at John Carroll. That's class of 2022. I am from Madison, Ohio, and I'm a major in political science, economics, and Italian. Hi, guys. Um, my name is Emma Kasichik. I am from Ashtabula, Ohio. I am a sophomore here at Carroll, class of 2023, and I am a communication major with a concentration in communication advocacy. Hi everyone, I'm Nick Breyer. Um, I'm from Akron, Ohio, uh, class of 2022, so I'm a junior this year, and my major is accounting. Hi everyone, my name is Jen Patterson. I graduated in May of 2020 um, with a major in management and human resources and now I'm back for my MBA, which I will graduate um, in May of 2022. And my hometown is Marysville, Ohio, which is a suburb of Columbus. Great, and we're just gonna go ahead and get started and talk about some things that you can do to get involved here at Carroll. Um, so Matt is going to go ahead and start. He is our president of student government. Thank you very much, Katie. And as you just heard her say, I am the president of student government here at John Carroll University. And in case you're not familiar with what a student government is here at John Carroll University, that is our elected group of representatives on behalf of the student body. Um, and our job basically is to advocate for the students on behalf uh, of the student body to administration. We act as a liaison between the student body and the university's administration to communicate back and forth the interests of the students and administration in order to get things done to improve student life here on campus. As of right now, our student government is comprised primarily of three different entities, mainly two, but I will add a third and you'll see why here in a minute. That is the Senate and the Executive Board. Currently, the Senate has six senators per class, that being first, th first years, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. And we rotate these based on an ad, on a calendar year rather than an academic year. Uh, and their job in the Senate is to vote on legislation and work on different advocacy committees in order to get projects done for the student body. The second entity is that of the executive board, which is comprised of myself, the president, the executive vice president, and a board of vice presidents, including the vice president for business affairs, vice president for judicial affairs, student organizations, programming, diversity, equity, and inclusion, and communications. And our executive board works as a, an administrative office in order to help the Senate function as smoothly as possible. The third entity, which I mentioned, is the chief of staff, which serves as a middle ground between the Senate and the executive board, also to help make sure things run smoothly from an administrative standpoint. So moving on to what exactly our student government has been involved with and how you guys can get involved. So. As I mentioned, you guys can get involved in a few different ways. First off and foremost is running for Senate. We hold our elections every fall for the, the subsequent year to be sworn in during the spring and serve for the spring and fall of a year calendar. However, that is not the only way in which you guys could get involved in student government. You can also join an advocacy committee as a student at large. One thing I'm very proud of, of our student government right now is we have a record number of student at large helping our organization get projects done around the clock. 
Uh, right now, one of our committees, our residence life committee, is working with the faculty of the facilities in our university in order to get a few things done to improve the residence life and our residence halls in different areas. And our student at large are playing a large role in that project in order to get a lot of the work done. However, there are other ways you can get involved just from an advocacy standpoint, including social media. We are very active on social media, including Instagram and Twitter. You'll see right there our handle at JCU Student Government. However, along with that, if you'd like to get involved in some other way, or if you have any questions, you can feel free to ask myself here in the chat or my email, which is right up there on the slide, mmeyer22 at jcu.edu. And also, please be sure to check our, our newly updated webpage. Thank you, Advisor Jansen, for getting that up to date. The link is right there as well. I'll hand it off next to Emma. Hi, guys. Um, as I said, my name is Emma Kostichik. I um, kind of serve a dual role between student government and the Student Union Programming Board. Um, I am the president of the Student Union Programming Board, which means that I am on the executive board for student government as the vice president for programming. Um, but specifically for the Student Union Programming Board, um, we are an organization, as you can see our mission statements up here, and it's to provide students with programming that allows engagement in many diverse events that bring the John Carroll community together. So even though the pandemic has kind of uprooted um, all of our lives, um, we are still providing in-person and virtual programming for all students at John Carroll. Um, our events typically range from, you know, off-campus events such as top golf trips that are paid for by the university. Um, and we also have, you know, tradition events such as our welcome back concert that happens every year. Um, and that is virtual during, you know, COVID times. We had Quinn 92 this year. We've had um, Chris Lane, a bunch of big name artists come and perform for the community. Um, there are many different ways to get involved with SUPB. Um, there is an exec board that is made up of myself, a president, major events coordinator, a bunch of events coordinators, marketing coordinator, digital marketing coordinator, finance coordinator, and recruitment and retention coordinator. So a team of paid employees. Um, but there also is Another level that's less commitment and that is being a team member, which is kind of helping the exec board brainstorm ideas for events that, you know, different students may have since we all don't like the same things and we want to make sure that everyone is represented well um, and sees their event ideas come to life, even, you know, the kind of crazy ones that aren't as traditional. We try to please everyone. Um, and then, yeah, other than that, you can also become involved with SUPB through just attending events or giving us feedback. We have events every Thursday night. We have virtual trivia online where you can win real prize money gift cards. Um, we have an event every Friday and every Saturday as well. So yeah, stay up to date with all of the events that we have through following our Instagram. We post all of our events and pictures from our events at the handle right there. Um, other information on our website. And as Matt said, feel free to ask me questions in the chat or shoot me an email at my email that's right there. But other than that, I will pass it off to our vice president for student organizations, Nick. Everybody, so as Emma said, I'm the vice president of student organizations and um, I get to I have the pleasure to share or sorry chair the board of um, student organization budget board. Um, so that's a good way to get involved if you're interested in numbers and kind of like being in the know of new clubs. Um, please send me an email we're actually looking for new new people now I kind of compare it to um, like the shark tank on campus a little bit so uh, that's kind of what got me into it uh, freshman year um, so that's a great way to get involved and then also um, we have a lot of student organizations on campus um, which is just a great way to meet people um, I know when I was in freshman sophomore just being in clubs is a great way to meet people um, you start, you know, if you're interested in something, you can learn new things um, like there's chess club, improv club, Italian club, um, investment club. Um, what else? I mean, there's 90 of them. I'm not going to go through all of those. But um, if you're interested, 
uh, go to Carol Connect and you can just, you know, if there's something you're interested in, you type it in there and uh, you'll probably find something. But if we don't have it, um, we also provide a lot of resources for you to create your own club. Um, so if you're interested in doing that, you first thing you're going to want to do is some find some interested people. Um, you will need to find an advisor uh, and then you'll submit a student petition form. Uh, then you'll present in front of Saab. Uh, and then once you're approved, you submit an application for recognition. Um, and then you'll receive a constitution uh, feedback and then complete officer training. So um, obviously, if you actually want to do this, you'll, you know, I can give you more information on that and you can reach out to me. Um, but it is a really good way to meet people and network. And, you know, you start to see people in your classes and you start to see people in clubs. So uh, I highly suggest you get involved with some sort of org on campus. And like I already said, if there's not already an org, um, you know, a great, great thing to do is to start a new one. And um, yeah, passing, passing it on to Jen now. Um, Nick, before um, you pass it to Jen, I have a yeah. question. Um, can you explain Carol Connect a little more for maybe those in the audience that aren't familiar with that? Like yeah, me? so yeah, so Carol Connect, um, it's I, it's just like a hub, and you can uh, see a lot of different student orgs on there. Um, I don't really know how else to explain it. Is that did I do a good enough job? Yeah, I can, I can help you a little bit more, Nick. So it's really just a centralized place where all of our student orgs are housed. So where all the events happen, I know, um, like, for example, say Italian club has a meeting that will be where it is the zoom links there if um, it's not on zoom, then the room number will be there. So it's just really a centralized place where you can find out what organizations are on campus as well as when those organizations have meetings. Yeah, that's what I said. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and talk about the leadership programs here at John Carroll. Um, I um, highly encourage you guys to do all of these. They're a great way to get involved and meet a lot of different people. I've met some of the people, um, I should say my closest friends through these programs. So the leadership formation series is tiers one through four. Um, most of the time these are done throughout your uh, first three years at John Carroll um, and they happen each semester. So tiers one and three are in the fall and tiers two and four are in the spring. What these really are just developmental activities for um, a small group of students. No groups larger than 12. Um, oftentimes they range between six and eight, which is great. So you really form uh, great relationships with those people in the, the group. Um, as far as Strengths Finder, Strengths Finder is something that you take um, during or prior to coming to John Carroll and you get to figure out what your top five strengths are. It's an awesome material um, and it's great to really talk about post-grad. I know a lot of, um, in my grad school interview, I talked about my strengths and how they really relate and what, um, how they make me who I am today. Um, another thing that complements both of those is the leadership minor. If you're a leadership scholar, you're definitely going to minor in leadership development. However, if you're not, it's one of the easiest majors to do. Um, Kyle, Dr. Kyle O'Dell designed it around um, really the classes that you need to take. Um, and there's an issues in social justice class, which um, I know a lot of people, that's their favorite classes that they take at John Carroll. It encompasses um, a lot of what's going on in the real world and you spend a lot of time reflecting and talking as a group. Um, there's many leadership positions on um, at John Carroll. Um, some of the main ones are student government. So Emma, Matt and Nick hold a formal leadership position at John Carroll. Um, a resident assistant is a formal position and orientation leader. Those are all formal positions, but what's great about John Carroll and uh, the student orgs um, is that there's a, many unformal um, or informal position. So whether that's leading a group project in what I talked about, um, the three prior bullet points, so the tiers, the strengths finder and the leadership development minor, those will help you become a leader in those informal settings, which is great. Um, and to answer the last question, why take advantage of leadership education and development at John Carroll? It's just gonna make you a better person as a whole. 
Um, it's really going to challenge you to think outside the box. Um, through the classes, you are going to be challenged to do things for the community, for the capstone course for the leadership development minor. Um, a personal experience I had was I raised our, I put on a, a clothing drive for the Fatima Family Center. And it was great because we donated two whole carloads of clothes and shoes to an organization in the Cleveland area that was in need. So um, just really great. Um, and it's helped me in many different aspects of my life. Um, if you have questions, feel free to contact myself. Uh, I can drop my uh, email in the chat and then also contact leadership at gcu.edu. Um, now I'm going to turn it over to Katie to finish this up. Thanks, Jen. So uh, just to kind of give you a thought about looking forward at fall semester, um, you all are admitted students at this point. So kind of the next step for you is when you're ready to submit your $300 enrollment deposit to get ready to join the class of 2025. Um, so when you become a student at John Carroll, the start of the semester really kicks off the minute you move in. Um, in August. Um, the day that move-in takes place is August 25th, and classes start on August 30th. So what that means is for one week, we have activities that are just for first-year students, what we call streak week. Um, so we have different activities all throughout the week. Um, we'll bring a hypnotist to campus. We um, will have a dance party on the quad. We have all kinds of cool stuff, um, potentially a day of service. Um, and then towards the end of some, uh, the middle beginning of September, um, we have two big activities on campus, our welcome back concert uh, to be determined who we will have um, and a student involvement fair. And the student involvement fair is something really awesome. Um, it's a cool way for you to look at all of the different clubs and organizations on campus. Um, think like Pitch Perfect, uh, everyone's all signed up, all in the gym or out on the quad, and you can go to the different tables and meet the different clubs, see what you want to get involved with. Um, they've got cool swag for you, um, things for you to just learn about what they do. Um, in October, right after fall break, our leadership formation programs that Jen talked about begin. And then uh, towards the end of October, early November, that's when all those big elections start. Um, the process for selecting an R, um, our RA staff or orientation leader staff begins. Um, so those more formalized leadership roles really kick off towards the end of the fall semester. So this is just a very vague timeline of what the fall looks like. Um, as Emma noted, you know, SUPB is doing programming Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays every weekend. Um, all of the student orgs have programs going on throughout the week as well. Um, so there's a whole lot that goes on in between just these key dates to look at. Um, so we've talked at you for quite a while. Um, we want to open the floor, though, to any of the questions that you all have. Um, and I know Melissa will check in the chat for any of those. But, um, you know, these can be formal questions. They could be specific to the students, whatever, whatever you all want to ask. I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing my screen so that we can see you if um, you want us to see you. Katie, while people are thinking about their questions, um, you know, you had shared that timeline for the fall. I do want to share with our students that, you know, John Carroll is looking forward to having a very robust and in-person experience going forward for, for your class. Um, you know, we're moving forward um, with plans to have a, normal, um, you know, start of our semester next year. So I know that's probably a big question on a lot of your minds. Um, so just rest assured that we've put everything in place that we need to do to ensure that we can get back to a normal college experience for our students. Yeah, I want to add to, sorry. Um, yeah, you guys really did have a crummy start to your years. Um, but that being said, moving forward, um, it is what you put into it. Um, so getting involved and going like and trying to meet people like that's on you, like COVID or not. Um, I remember being in the same shoes uh, my freshman, sophomore, and, and it was tough, uh, even without a pandemic going on. So, um, you know, you really just got to put your foot forward and just kind of get involved with stuff and it'll really make your experience better. 
Um, so we have a question um, regarding that first week is only for freshmen. Um, that is correct, but I don't know if any of our students want to elaborate on like what Street Week looks like and elaborate on their experience a little more. Emma, you want to talk about Street Week? I know you've been a SWAT leader. Yeah, for sure. So I am only a sophomore. So unfortunately, I've only been a SWAT leader virtually, um, but I did attend Streak Week my freshman year. And it's kind of just an opportunity for other freshmen to meet each other. You know, as Nick said, um, it's, it's a learning curve coming to college because it's not like something that anyone's ever done before. It's totally different than high school and everything else. Um, so meeting people is key. And there's programs put on um, by Office of Student Engagement, SUPB, and other organizations to really give freshmen the opportunity to meet each other and mingle with each other. Um, even virtually last semester, well, two semesters ago, no, last semester it was, um, there were like breakout rooms for students to meet each other that had similar interests or small groups with a SWAT leader, which was what I was. Um, where we would like kind of address questions that everyone had on a smaller, more individual basis. Um, you know, it's just a really good opportunity for students to meet each other before classes ramp up. And so you can get kind of accustomed to your new environment before having to focus on school. Yeah, if I can just add one more thing. So um, I just kind of caught the last part of the question is only for freshmen. And yes, it is only for freshmen. And that's great because everyone's going through the same situation that you're going through. You're all trying to meet friends. And I remember my freshman year, it was, I loved that it was just only freshmen because we were all a little awkward together. And then by the end of the night, we were all friends and we were all hanging out the next day. So it's just great that it is freshmen. And it's great that John Carroll Office of Student um, Engagement and SUPB, SUPB put on events just solely for the freshmen. A term that Emma threw out there that probably sounds a little bit weird to you all is SWAT leader. And what that means is Street Week Assistance Team. Um, so those are some of our upperclassmen students that come back a few days early uh, to help lead some of those conversations in small groups that you all join. So um, there's only a handful of upperclassmen students that are on campus for that, but they're really here to help accentuate your experience. Um, kind of going back to what Melissa had mentioned earlier about us really working towards a strong fall, um, the Student Affairs Department has been working on putting um, tents outside on the different areas of the quad. Matt has been a part of this committee as well, um, just to find more spaces outdoors to, you know, either shade it for when it's hot or keep it a little bit warmer while it's cold out. Um, so we're going to have tents all over campus so that we can take programming to bigger spaces outside as well. Um, something new that we added to some of our common areas outside as well this year um, were some space heaters. So um, that has really helped accentuate some different spaces on campus so that when it's a little bit chilly out in this Ohio weather, we can still uh, go outside and enjoy a meal on you know, our Keller Commons or on some of our uh, joining areas. All right. Um, you know, we had touched upon student organizations. Um, and, you know, we do have a robust number of organizations on campus that are everything from, you know, social to academic to social justice service based clubs. Um, I don't know if one of you wants to talk about, you know, how a student would go about starting a club if there's something that they have in mind that maybe we don't have on campus right now. Yeah, um, I touched on that a little bit. I was vague um, just because if you really want me to get in depth with it, I think everyone will go to sleep. But um, like basically you wanna you wanna find people who are interested, um, first of all. And but then also too, something you want to consider is is it even worth being a student club? Because the benefits of being a student club um, are you get funding, um, you get an involvement fair table. Uh, transportation and the ability to book rooms but you know a lot of times you know just getting people together you don't need to actually be a student org however if you do want the benefits of being a student org um, you know you're gonna 
I kind of already ran through it, but you're going to want to find interested members, 10 plus. Um, you're going to need an academic advisor. Um, then you're going to need to submit a petition form. Uh, and then you'll present in front of Saab. And then once you're approved, uh, you submit an application of recognition. Um, and then you will complete like officer training for your financial officer and your um, your president. Hope that helps. I will say, um, so Nick gave all of the steps there. Um, that he is here and his advisor, Sam, are also available um, to really walk you through that process. So it's yeah. not just like you want to start a club and you're thrown to the wolves. Um, a student just came up to our office yesterday and said, I want to start a tennis club. And Sam sat down and walked him through it. Um, and when I was talking to Nick about this, he's like, oh, yeah, I've done this a few times this semester and it's only March. So you know, this is something that's a real great opportunity for anyone who's really passionate about that. Um, the perks that he explained are really great perks. You know, just being able to have a table at the involvement fair is such a hot commodity. Um, same with having um, the access to funding to be able to get um, activities and initiatives out in on campus. Um, but I do want to answer a question I got via direct message. That is, when is Streak Week? And that is from August 25th to August 30th. So it runs from the day of move-in for first-year students through up until the first day of classes. Cool. Um, since we're on the topic of student organizations, um, can the panel tell us what are some of our more popular student organizations are? Yeah, I mean, it, I don't really know how to judge like which are the most popular. Um, there's not really like a class system to it, but it's really whatever you're interested in. I know um, freshman year or sophomore year, I was in the finance association um, and there's a lot of people there. Um, I know investment club and I can only speak on the ones I was a part of. Um, I remember the investment club was pretty popular. Um, the chess club, which just started, um, actually had a great turnout. Um, you know, people interested in learning how to play chess and play other people um, who are the same skill level as them. Um, I know that was really popular and they just started this semester. Uh, the student organization budget board just approved them like, uh, I don't know, two months ago, maybe less than three months ago. Yeah. so. And they have amazing turnout already. So um, it's it kind of goes to prove that, you know, if you, you put in, you know, go through a couple hoops, um, you can really get things started quickly on campus. I would second what Nick said there. There's not really um, a club that's like more popular than another. Um, it really goes based on student interest. Um, there are political organizations, social, cultural. Um, so really, whatever you're passionate about, there's typically a club there. I saw that Emma had something to say, so I'll kind of pass it on to her. Um, I was just going to kind of go off of what Nick was saying and what Katie was saying. Um, you know, it's based off of what you're interested in. Um, and I can obviously only speak off of what I was a part of slash am a part of. Um, but I'm a part of obviously SUPB, which is pretty popular. Um, all the different levels of involvement in SUPB are popular. Um, once you're a team member for a year, you can then apply to be on the executive board, um, which is a paid position. But um, I've also played intramural sports through the rec department. Those are super popular. Um, during COVID times, they're doing cornhole tournaments, stuff like that. So it's socially distant, but you still get to do competition. Um, there's a Labra project group where you can go out into the Cleveland community and help feed the homeless. Um, I'm a part of that too. So there's so many fun organizations on campus that it's so rewarding to get involved with. Um, are there any medical clubs or anything related to like free health, things like that? That's a great question. Yeah, um, there's the John Carroll University Emergency Medical Services. Oh wait, JCU EMS. 
Um, let's see. I'm on. I'm actually on Carol Connect right now because I don't have all these memories. Like, but uh, yeah. So the there's a minority association of pre medical students, and then there's a pre medicine society. So I found all that in like two seconds, just on Carol Connect, and I typed in medic. So, uh, yeah, that was a great question. Yeah. Um, I just, I want to elaborate a little bit on the EMS because I actually that that club has been around for a little while and um, one of my friends was part of that group the EMS group um, but it's student run student led they actually train with University Heights medics and so like they're fully full EMS so it's a great opportunity not only to get some EMS training um, but you could save somebody's life on campus someday so. There are also like STEM based clubs. So there's like women in STEM, there's a general bio club, chemistry club. Um, and they usually bring in guest speakers from the like medical field or other fields related to STEM. So while they're not exactly medic, um, they do have components of that. And from what I hear, they're great when you need homework help too, so. Okay, well, we're coming up on seven o'clock. Does anybody in our audience have any other questions for our panelists? Um, if not, I don't know if the panelists have any parting words before we sort of start wrapping up our webinar. Some of you, of you may want to, you know, need to go to the next one. So we want to be respectful of your time. So, Katie? Yeah, I would just say, um... You know, don't be afraid to reach out. I posted these four fine friends of mine, um, their contact information in the chat. They are really wonderful resources. Um, these are some of the best students that we have on our campus. Not to say that they're not all great, but um, these, these ones are particularly exceptional. Um, they're great resources for you. Um, they will be welcoming faces that you see either at new student orientation or during streak week. So. Um, I hope that we can uh, have the opportunity to meet you all in person this August. Um, but yeah, Emma, Nick, Matt, Jen, if there's anything else you want to add, um, maybe like just one little piece of advice or um, some thought as these students go into their decision process, that might be nice. Yeah, I would just say um, you just got to step out of your comfort zone a little bit, actually a lot of bit. Um, but you'll, you know, if you're gonna, if you sit around and wait for things to happen to you, they won't, I swear, um, they don't. So, uh, you just gotta try new things, meet new people and, um, you know, you'll start to reach a flow and college will start to feel like a welcoming place. So that's all I have to say. Thanks for coming. Yeah, going off what Nick said, um, step out of your comfort zone and get involved. Um, don't, you know, waste your time here at college, especially at John Carroll. It's such a great environment. Um, make the most out of it and use your resources. So thank you again for coming. And seriously, please reach out if you need anything. That same sentiment to close out as well. You'll hear it quite a few times being said, and it might sound corny by the end of it, but they're not joking college your college experience is going to be what you make of it so a lot of my closest friends are people that I've been involved in, in different clubs it's how you get to socialize it's how you get to meet people and those are friendships will carry on well throughout your career as well so getting involved early and often and finding things that you enjoy is going to improve your college life dramatically so myself as well if you have any questions for myself please do not hesitate to reach out Yeah, um, and just to wrap things up even more, um, my piece of advice to everyone is always say yes. Um, you can always say no um, eventually, but say yes, get involved. Um, what your passions are your first year may not be what your passions are your second year. I know um, throughout my four years, they definitely changed, but I wouldn't know what my passions are today without saying yes. Um, so say yes, you can always unjoin a club, um, email the president um, and just say, hey, I'm not interested in this any longer. I'm going to put my time and effort into something else. And they're going to be completely understanding of that. 
Um, so my advice is very, very simple. Just say yes. Um, and John Carroll will become your home. I always say, uh, tell people I love John Carroll so much. I decided to stay for two more years. Um, so um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, please reach out. Katie put my email in um, the chat. And other than that, thanks for coming guys. Um, we all enjoyed spending our evening with you. All right. Thanks again, everybody. Um, and those of you that, um, you know, don't forget to uh, reach out to your enrollment manager if you have any questions. We are happy to connect you with any of these students um, going forward. Thanks again. Have a good evening, everyone.